welcome back now we are going to see coraco acromial arch or supra humeral arch the coraco acromial arch is formed by the coracoid process and the acromial processes of the scapula so coracoid process and the acromial process of the scapula and these are a connected by these are connected by an osteoligamentous vault this forms an osteoligamentous vault and it is a triangular in shape it is a triangular in shape which connects the coracoid process and the acromion process called as coracoacromial ligament coracoacromial ligament this coracoacromial ligament forms the coracoacromial arch okay and this coracoacromial ligament extends from the tip of the acromion process to the lateral border of the coracoid process okay and a space is present below this arch and the supraspinatus and the humeral head that space is called as subacromial space in that subacromial space you'll have the subacromial bursa the subacromial bursa is continuous with the deltoid bursa these two bursa collectively called as subacromial bursa okay and the arch is separated from the supraspinatus muscle by an extensive subacromial bursa which acts as secondary socket for the head of the humerus and allows lateral uh, rotation of the humerus in raising the arm above the head in raising the arm above the head when the greater tubercle impinges when the lateral tubercle impinges on the lateral border of the coracoid coracoacromial arch so this bursa helps not to impinge the structures that is the supraspinatus tendon in between the arch and the greater tubercle okay and this is about the coracoacromial arch and the subacromial bursa the subacromial bursa the rotator cuff tendons and a portion of tendon of long head of biceps brachii lie within the subacromial space and uh, these structures are protected by this coracoacromial arch superiorly from trauma from direct trauma which is caused to this structures superiorly okay such trauma could occur mainly uh, by doing simple daily tasks such as uh, carrying a heavy bag over the shoulder carrying a heavy bag over the shoulder okay and uh, this arch protects this arch protects the structures which are lying in the subacromial space from direct trauma superiorly and also this arch acts as a physical barrier to superior translatory forces acting on the humeral head and it is preventing the humeral head from dislocating superiorly okay this arch acts as a physical barrier to uh, superior translatory forces to superior translatory forces which are acting on the humeral head preventing it from the dislocating superiorly that means it is providing joint stability superiorly okay although 
this arch is uh, providing joint stability contact of the humeral head contact of the humeral head under the surface of the arch can simultaneously cause can simultaneously cause impingement painful impingement so although it is providing joint stability during arm elevation what will happen the structures are impinged in between these two things causes pain or mechanical aberration of the structures within the subacromial space so though it acts as a physical barrier and not dislocating this uh, humeral head superiorly but what will happen during impingement of this humeral head to the lateral border of the uh, coracoacromial arch causes damage to the structures that is the mechanical aberration to the structures which is present in the subacromial space okay out of all these uh, structures i have mentioned earlier the structures which are passing through the subacromial bursa that is the rotator cuff tendons and a portion of the tendon of the long head of biceps brachii okay and the subacromial bursa all these structures are um, vulnerable to such kind of damage but the most vulnerable uh, damage out of all these structures are the supraspinatus structure because of its location the supraspinatus muscle is exactly uh, beneath this uh, subacromial uh, but some if you can see the origin and insertion and the course of this muscle so by the side of this only um, uh, the supraspinatus fossa is present here from there this muscle is getting originating and it is um, running below the coracoacromial arch exactly and it is getting inserted into the uh, upper notch of the greater tubercle okay so because of this course this muscle is more vulnerable to the impingement uh, if you see the remaining structures uh, like um, subacromial bursa and also the remaining rotator cuff tendons and also the long head of biceps uh, those structures um, or some structures except uh, which is present beneath this uh, coracoid process and if you see the subacromial bursa so it which is present almost on the lateral side okay so these uh, structures are also a less vul vulnerable to such kind of impingement but um, the most impinged structure is the supraspinatus tendon supraspinatus tendon is uh, more affected in the uh, subacromial space okay and um, coming to the subacromial space in detail the subacromial space is also referred as supra humeral space or supraspinatus outlet so now only i have told that this is the supraspinatus muscle which is coming out isn't it so this one is called as supraspinatus outlet also and um, this space is used by measuring the superior to inferior by measuring the superior to inferior acromio humeral interval superior to inferior acromio humeral interval on radiographs and that means uh, this interval uh, is going to uh, calculate uh, um, in conditions any shoulder conditions on uh, radiographs okay so this interval uh, has some uh, a length uh, in millimeters so this may vary from normal to abnormal so in normal what will happen in abnormal what will happen by that way they can diagnose what is that uh, condition happened here okay this interval averages 10 millimeters so this interval averages 10 millimeters 
in healthy subjects with arm adducted with the arm adducted by the side okay so the interval is this acromio humeral interval is 10 millimeters 10 millimeters in length when the arm is adducted when the arm is adducted by the side when the arm is adducted by the side whereas and this interval is decreased to uh, about 5 millimeters this interval is decreased about 5 millimeters during elevation of the arm during elevation the elevation may be abduction or reflection so during mainly the abduction this uh, interval is decreased to 5 millimeters so as the acromio humeral interval decreases what will happen so if the space is decreasing it has to it must accommodate the soft tissue structures within it so the soft tissue structures has to be uh, accommodated in this space as well as the articular cartilage and the capsulo ligamentous structures and the capsulo ligamentous structures all will um, uh, fit into the space okay for this reason um, Flato and colleagues suggested that even during normal motion also even during normal motion into the humeral elevation there is some contact of there is some contact of the rotator cuff with the coracoacromial arch so in the previous thing we have to uh, we have studied that the subacromial bursa is protecting the impingement between the coracoacromial arch and the rotator cuffs but during normal motion also humeral motion during elevation especially what will happen there may be a contact so there is some contact of the rotator cuff with the coracoacromial arch is taking place however a recent um, 3d imaging has determined that anatomical approximation of the supraspinatus tendon with the acromion occurs at humeral elevation angles below 60 degrees so below 60 degrees uh, of uh, humeral elevation also there is a, a contact of supraspinatus tendon with the acromion occurs while the smallest acromio humeral interval is between the acromion and the greater tuberosity of the humerus at approximately 90 degrees of elevation so the least angle the least so not angle the least um, uh, interval of this acromio humeral um, uh, space is seen when the arm is uh, elevated at 90 degrees at that space this greater tubercle is almost all very much nearer to the acromion process okay this anatomical relationship suggests that normal decreases in the acrohumeral distance during arm elevation the anatomical relationship this kind of anatomical relationship suggests that normal decreases the normal decreases in the acromiohumeral distance during arm elevation during arm elevation may not impact the rotator cuff may not impact the rotator cuff at elevation angles at elevation angles higher than the 60 degrees higher than 60 degrees because higher than 60 degrees what will happen this greater tuberosity is um, uh, getting come into contact with the acromion process then the tendons are uh, the tendons will uh, uh, spare off from this uh, degree of movement but 
at uh, below 60 degrees of um, below 60 degrees or at the 60 degrees of elevation of the arm this tendons are uh, present somewhat um, uh, away from this acromion process so there may be a chances of uh, contact of this uh, structures below the uh, 60 degrees of elevation okay so this is about the uh, sub subacromial spaces and the structures and their uh, intervals uh, how much it is present and that anatomical relationship what this anatomical relationship suggests um, uh, and also this uh, relationship with the coraco acromial arch with that of the rotator cuff tendons and now these are the basic things we have seen now now if this subacromial space decreases even more then what happens even more than the normal the subacromial space decreases even more than the normal what will happen definitely yes definitely the impingement of the rotator cuff tendons and subacromial bursa during elevation of the arm increases during the elevation of the arm increases good next the space can decrease so we have seen that if the space is decreased then what will happen in the normal uh, space what is happening so even more if the space is uh, decreased what will happen that means in all those things there is an impingement there is an impingement of structures which are present below this coracoacromial arch isn't it is that is happening in normal there is a contact of these structures with the uh, coracoacromial arch and then next what happen if the space decreases what will happen there may be an impingement of these structures in between them even more uh, if the space is decreased what is happening even more the space is decreases more impingement of the rotator cuff tendons and the subacromial bursa is taking place during what elevation of the arm increases so how the space is going to decrease now so what are the reasons to decrease the space so the space can decrease by anatomical factors as well as some abnormal scapular and humeral motions will decrease the space so what are the anatomical factors which are decreasing the space so the anatomical factors which are decreasing the space in this below this um, uh, coracoacromial arch that is the subacromial space or changes in the shape changes in the shape or slope of the acromion and also acromial bone spurs acromial bone spurs spurs means an extra growth which are taking place on the bones and acromioclavicular joint osteophytes acromioclavicular joint osteophytes this spurs and osteophytes are one of the degenerative changes of the bone and the joints and also a large coraco acromial ligament a large coraco acromio uh, coraco acromial ligament okay and these are the anatomical factors which decreases the subacromial space and coming to this abnormal scapular or humeral motions can also uh, functionally reduce the size of the subacromial space there is no uh, change in the anatomical space but during this motions of this uh, abnormal motions of the scapula and humerus causes decrease in space of the subacromial uh, space that is subacromial space okay what are those uh, abnormal motions so 
inadequate posterior tilting of the scapula inadequate posterior tilting of the scapula and um, inadequate upward rotation of the scapula so posterior tilting of the scapula and inadequate upward rotation of the scapula causes uh, decrease in the subacromial space during arm elevation or another uh, factors another abnormal motion that is about the humerus so humeral movements what is happening there is an um, excessive superior excessive superior translation or anterior translations of the humeral head on the glenoid fossa or believed to bring this humeral head in closer approximity to the acromion increasing the risk of impingement so simply you can see this thing you can visualize these two movements so what is happening so improper posterior tilt inadequate posterior tilting if this um, scapula is not uh, tilting posteriorly the space so what will happen it will move like this so that means anteriorly the scapula so what will happen definitely the space is going to decrease all these structures are uh, remain constant on this side what will happen this will move anteriorly what will happen the space is decreased okay and another thing is and also the proper upward uh, rotation if this upward rotation of the scapula takes in place then what happens this structure will move away from this so it will move away from this what will happen the space is increased okay if it is not moving properly what will happen the space uh, below this coracoacromial arch decreases isn't it so if the scapula is in a normal position okay so then what happened uh, coming to this uh, humeral movements so this excessive superior translation see this so this humeral head is moving upward definitely the interval the subacromial space is decreased and also excessive anterior translation so what is happening so this is moving uh, anteriorly what is happening the space here is decreasing again so in these two cases in these two cases uh, uh, causes decrease in the subacromial space which causes uh, increasing the risk of impingement okay so what will happen if impinges impingement happens so finally so for daily tasks uh, you, uh, these structures may impinge and after some time it is getting relieved but such kind of repetitive impingement repetitive impingement leads to inflammation so leads to inflammation and the next stage of inflammation leads to fibrosis and uh, thickening of the soft tissues so fibrosis and thickening of the soft tissues just think that once the thickening of the soft tissue is taking place what happens again reducing this subacromial space during arm elevation occurs okay so abnormal anatomic factors and motion abnormalities have been identified in persons with impingement you have to identify whether the space is decreased due to anatomical variations or physiological variations you have to identify and what is the cause of decrease in the subacromial space during arm elevation you have to find out okay but overall the things the main structure which is going to impingement uh, is the supraspinatus tendon okay so this is about the coracoacromial arch in various aspects okay in the next session we are going to see the glenohumeral movements thank you